afternoon and welcome back to Questioning Sense with me, Matt. Okay, um, I've, I've made a video a little while ago where I referenced my wonderful day out sniffing in town. So I went into London for the day and popped into various places and uh, had a little sniff around. Um, and one of the places I popped into was the Burlington Arcade, which hosts, you know, it's a bit of a, a hotspot for uh, niche perfumery in England and you are in London. And you've got By Killian in there, you've got Penn Hannigan's in there, Roger Dove's in there, and Atkinson's. Now, I had a lovely time in there. The guy that was in the store, I think, was the manager. What, first and foremost, what a beautiful store. It's a three uh, floor store. Um, you have like a, a sort of a kind of a, a perfume bar as you go in. It's all beautifully lit. I've obviously spent an absolute fortune making the place look magnificent. And then there's a consultation room um, and like a studio in there as well. I was in the, uh, the the perfume bar, unfortunately no bar, no more, no drinking anyway. Um, and I had a really, really good time in there chatting to the guy that, that, that manages the store. Uh, what a wealth of knowledge he has. All the range are out, all the Atkinson's range is out there for you to in, you know, explore um, and then you know you can sort of chat about any particular ones or just have a sort of general perfume chit chat which is what I did. Now Atkinson's are a very well established brand, they're very historical, they're um, I think it's 1799 James Atkinson came clumping down from Cumbria to uh, set up this uh, perfume house and, and he did so. They literally have made perfumes for kings and queens. I think even Napoleon gets a mention in there. So, you know, the, the brand is steeped in history, although I believe it's Italian owned now. Um, you know, they, they are sort of like that quintessential uh, English um, luxury brand. And they really do have some amazing fragrances. And the, just, the, you know, the presentation on the bottles and everything is beautiful. It's a real... You know, it's a real niche luxury experience and uh, one that if you do get a chance to go into the stores, uh, the store in London anyway, please do. It's it's such a, a lovely visit. Now, um, there were three, there, there were quite a few that I sampled that day uh, and, and sniffed and there were three that really, really stood out on me and they very, very kindly um, gave me a sample of each of them to take away. Um, there was one that I really, really loved as well, which I think was their Platinum, which is a Selfridges exclusive although they did have it in store. Um, they didn't have any samples of that, but I did get to smell it and it was pretty, really stunning. Um, but the three we're gonna have a look at today, this is slightly different from um, the normal reviews we do on Question and Sense because these are samples that I've been wearing for like a couple of weeks. So I don't really know them inside out like if I was reviewing one of my own fragrances. But the three we're gonna look at are His Majesty the Oud, the other side of the oud and the excelsior bouquet so look at that i mean even the sample boxes are gorgeous look i mean that's some top quality stuff there really 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 interesting um now if we start with the his majesty view this is beautiful this is kind of like an oudy um vanilla woodsy um affair Really, really good note definition, and they're all so beautifully blended. They're an absolute joy to wear. But the problem with this one, for me anyway, well, there's no problem with it. This is a stunning, stunning fragrance. This is very, very similar to Al Anik's Fakral Oud. Now, um, obviously, I'm a big fan of Fakral Oud. I've owned a couple of bottles of it now. Rich, the uh, the other half of Questioning Sense, he has a bottle of it. We're massive fans of it. And this is like uh, an expensive version of that so I will enjoy this sample um, but I won't be taking this one any further purely because Fakadal Oud is so similar and I couldn't justify owning two. Don't forget these Atkinson's um, bottles are very very expensive they're not um, they're not a cheap um, fragrance at all. So that let, let me on to this which is the other side of the Oud. Now I have got it on this uh, oh, this is going to be quite tricky because I'm wearing two different fragrances um, but it was a healthy sample I got as well, and I've, I've gone through quite a bit of it, as you can see. Um, so the, as you would imagine with a title like The Other Side of the Oud, there is Oud in this. But what Atkinson's do, and I really applaud them for it, when, they, when you look at the note breakdown, they use the term Oud nuances. Now, 
What Atkinson's have realised is that Oud brings a lot to the table. It's a very powerful note, um, you know, and, and in terms of a material that you're using to make a perfume, Oud is, you know, a very polarising one. And in its sort of more natural form or more realistic form, it can be um, incredibly polarising. It's, you know, as we've said thousands of times on this, you know, it's either it can be very fecal smelling, it can be barnyardy, it can be medicinal, it could be sweet, it can, it, you know, oud itself, it's a totally own thing. Um, and a lot of Western noses struggle with real strong kind of natural oud. And I'm probably one of those as well, because 99% of the time when I'm smelling oud in, in a fragrance and I'm liking it, it's a synthetic oud or it's, uh, you know, a very kind of polished and Western kind of oud. And Atkinson's realised that. So the oud nuances they use are designed purely for the Western, you know, sort of sort of audience, you know, the Western market. So if you're like um, an oud aficionado and you're looking for something really cool, you're not going to find it in the Atkinson's that I've, certainly the ones I've sampled anyway. It's there as a note to give depth and give, a, give an interest to it um so it's not going to be a, a very powerful oody oody fragrance at all kind of a bit like what tom ford does and, and and a few of the other sort of designer or high-end designer niche designer whatever you want to call it but the the note listing for this is ginger cardamom geranium coffee blossom oud nuances vanilla absolute and roasted coffee the coffee makes this because these two are actually quite similar but there's a roasted coffee note that comes into this which absolutely makes it a wonderful experience it it gives it some depth and a little bit of bitterness because you've got quite a lot of sweet elements coming on coming with it within this this fragrance and it could i wouldn't say become cloying it just that co the roasted coffee does smell very much like roasted coffee and what that does is it makes it all a bit darker now when this dries down it almost you're almost in a slightly sweeter black and uh, black afghano territory now. i absolutely love nasamato's black afghano it's a glorious glorious scent um but to some it can be a little overbearing but when it dries down it becomes quite sweet and almost nutty and with the coffee the oud and the vanilla together you almost get a sweet nuttiness there they are when black afghano dries down and the other side of the oud dries down they almost become quite similar. You're certainly, if, you can, if you've got black, or if you're familiar with black Afghano and you know what it smells like when it dries down, you're not a million miles away from this. So you, you will get an idea of, of what this smells like. It's, there's almost like a caramel sweetness underneath the coffee and the, the oud nuances that make this quite an interesting fragrance. And it's a really good wear, it lasts very long. It seems to project quite well for a couple of hours and then it becomes quite soft, but it does seem to have pretty good longevity. Um, I would strongly recommend sampling it um, because it is a, a, a big buy, it's a big ticket number, so one that you would need to have a look at. Beautiful stuff, highly recommended. Now the one that surprised me the most is this, the Excelsior Bouquet. This is glorious, I am wearing it on this hand um, and it's got an interesting note in it. If you look at um, the breakdown it says there's flint, sage, spice, leather and vetiver. Not a massive um, list of notes by any means, but they work so well. The, the lavendery opening with, I, I mean, I wouldn't know what to look for when, when smelling flint, but there is a kind of almost a metallic-y smell to this, which I think must be the flint. And you know, the sage adds to that. It gives a wonderful combination. It's so uplifting, it's so bright, and then it becomes quite leathery really really clever stuff in fact this could easily become my next big purchase now this is probably one of the cheaper ones from um the atkinson's range and this is to die for i thoroughly thoroughly recommend it i don't know if you can get sample ships overseas but if you can please do they have a wonderful range of fragrances and it's a real sort of amble down histories you know sort of the history of perfume shall we say when you go in there and if you're looking to have a consultation they will get out these sort of history books and let you go through them and then sit and talk to you about how you know what you what you're looking for in a smell uh, what you're looking for in a fragrance and then they will do their best to try and you know uh, find one that's going to suit your needs so you know we are talking a very luxury it's not like walking through a, you know a uh, shop and just grabbing it, spraying it, going, yeah, that'll do, I'll have that one, mate, lovely. You know, it doesn't work like that with Atkinson's. They tend to spend a lot more time 
with you, making sure that you're making the right purchase and you're going to be happy with the fragrance you're buying. Real good experience, but ultimately, take away all the fanfare and all the you know all the pomp and all the circumstance and all the rest of it. You, you strip it down to fragrances, and these fragrances are very, very good. They are expensive, and you will need to sample them first, but I thoroughly recommend that you have an explore of the range. There's quite a few. There's a Pirate's Grand Reserve that I really, really like. There was, a, I think, 24-hour Bond Street was another one that I liked. I think that was one of the old stores, or one of the original stores, maybe. Um, so there's a lot of history involved within the brand and, and the fragrances, but the three, the, the three that I really, really liked, uh, well, there's four that I really, really liked, but one I couldn't get a sample of. So, His Majesty the Oud, and I think they do a female-leaning one called Her Majesty the Oud. The Other Side of the Oud. Beautiful. Love it, love it, love it. So, to me, it's kind of straying into Black Afghano territory, and I think I probably prefer Black Afghano, so this I wouldn't, wouldn't take any further. But this crazy one with the flint in, the Excelsior Bouquet, I thoroughly love this. I really, really recommend it, and... Maybe, you know, if my numbers come up and I come into a couple of quid or something like that, I will uh, I'll hope to buy a bottle. And when I do, I'll be back with a full review of it because um, that's something special. Anyway, listen, a very, very brief, sort of almost like a first impression of Atkinson's, although I have had these samples for a little while and I have given them uh, quite, quite, quite a good wearing. I wouldn't say I've, you know, doused myself in them or anything like that because they're only sort of samples. But I have worn them a fair bit and I have really, really enjoyed them. So... Certainly a house worth checking out. Anyway, listen, thanks very much for your time. I hope you're having a wonderful day and we'll see you on the next review. Cheers. Bye.